In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate this sacred liturgy this morning on, the, on television on this 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Also the beginning of National Vocation Awareness Week. A special prayer of openness for our, our young people to be open to the possibility of vocations to priesthood and consecrated religious life. And so my friends, let's take a moment to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred liturgy as we call to mind our sins. Let's open our hearts to God's forgiving love. Lord Jesus, shepherd of souls, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, our light and salvation, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your humble servants. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the, in highest. the highest. And, and on, on earth, earth peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. A great king am I, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you do not listen, if you do not lay it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, and of your blessing I will make a curse. You have turned aside from the way and have caused many to falter by your instruction. You have made void the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. I, therefore, have made you contemptible and base before all the people. Since you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your decisions. Have we not all the one Father? Has not the one God created us? Why then do we break faith with one another, violating the covenant of our fathers? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. In you, In you Lord, Lord, I have, have found, found my peace. peace. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor are my eyes haughty. I busy not myself with great things, nor with things too sublime for me. In you, you Lord, Lord, I have found, found my, my peace. peace. Nay, rather, <clears throat> I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child. Like a weaned child on its mother's lap, so is my soul within me. In you, you Lord, Lord, I have, I have found, found my, my peace. peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now and forever. In you, Lord, I, I have, have found, found my peace. peace. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we were gentle among you as a nursing mother cares for her children. With such affection for you, we were determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our very selves as well, so dearly beloved you had become to us. You recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery, working night and day in order not to burden any of you, we proclaimed to you the gospel of God. And for this reason, we give thanks to God unceasingly, 
that in receiving the word of God from hearing us, you received not a human word, but as it truly is, the word of God, which is now at work in you who believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have but one Father in heaven and one Master, the Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all things whatsoever they tell you, but do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to carry, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they will not lift a finger to move them. All their works are performed to be seen. They widen their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. They love places of honor at banquets, seats of honor in the synagogues, greetings in marketplaces, and the salutation, Rabbi. As for you, do not be called Rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father, but you have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master, for you have what one, what, you have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our Catholic tradition of the ordained, there are three different levels of ordination, beginning with being ordained to the diaconate and as a transitional deacon, oftentimes a year before, then the second being ordained to the priesthood. And the third level is those who are called and ordained to be bishops. Well, I was ordained to the diaconate quite a number of years ago on April 15th of 1974. And in that ceremony, there were words and a directive given to me as to all of us being ordained. And ever since then, that just have been emblazoned on my mind and my heart and ones that I pray over and over again. And the words were, as the bishop handed me the book of the Gospels, were to believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Believe what you read. Teach what you believe, practice what you teach. Great challenges, are they not? Great ones that I have always taken very seriously in these 43 years since that time of ordination in 1974. And words that I really try to be faithful to in so many ways and in all the different ministries of priesthood that I have enjoyed since that ordination to diaconate. And I think of them ringing loud and clear as we just heard these readings proclaimed this morning from Malachi, who lived quite a long time before Jesus was born, and from Jesus himself. And almost as we listen to Malachi, who was lambasting what he considered to be really corrupt priests of the temple, that they were drawing their people and not being faithful to the liturgy that they were called to, to really celebrate, they were also neglecting to really teach the people the ways of following God. And so Malachi was, in a sense, in speaking for God, really um, challenging them and challenging them to change their ways, to become faithful. It almost reminds me of that billboard maybe we've seen sometimes, a billboard that says, don't make me come down there, signed God. Well, the truth is that God did come down among us in that sense in the person of Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. And we listen to him in the gospel, and he's again focused on really challenging and very directive, kind of tough love to those religious leaders, to the Sadducees, who we remember were the priests of the temple. 
and the Pharisees. The Pharisees were lay people, but they were steeped in the law and sacred scripture. And their role was to be able to teach people what sacred scripture was and to lead people in a greater understanding of liturgy. And even though Jesus challenges them and he sometimes even calls them hypocrites, that they weren't all bad. And in fact, he dined with them many different times. But the, it was that criticism that, that Jesus was posting in that gospel we just heard this morning that some of them were more interested in the way they looked, how they came across, than how they lived and really being consistent. So like he said, now be sure you, you listen to and follow everything they're teaching you, but don't follow their example. There's a big disconnect between what they're saying. And so it is that reminder that many times, not just in religious life and religious leaders, that there can be abuse of power. And maybe with religious leaders, we hold to a greater standard of, of holiness and goodness and consistency, but we all know that there are other kind of lifestyles that, that there can be an abuse of a power and authority. And many of, of, of you are people of authority, people of, in a sense, of power, and as parents, as workers, and even in all of our relationships that that we can be really honest in practicing what we preach and teach, or sometimes that there's a disconnect of, you know, that we can find ourselves really admitting, you know, maybe I need to get better at, at doing what I say and not just, just saying it and then expecting you to act differently. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. And so the Lord is always, always lifting us up into the high standard, the high moral standard that he continually teaches us is to people of, people of great integrity, that we grow in our belief and our understanding of who we are called to be. But again, we're very consistent in, in our behavior and what people experience from what we say. Do they really understand us to be people of faith? people really deeply in love with and striving to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Do people see that in our actions and our behaviors, how we deal with many different things, no matter what our position might be, that it's a huge command, is it not? And it is one of those great gifts that all of us in the midst of our being called to holiness are called to be people who live the faith that we've been given and to live the gospel that we've been called to. You know, that old adage is, is most often that important lessons of life are really caught, not only taught, but they're really caught by example and by the goodness of how we experience other people in our lives, no matter how young or older they happen to be. And so we have those admonitions of being able to, to really understand and to believe what we're teaching and, and growing into our own faith. But again, that there is no disconnect between how we live, how we speak, and what we say we believe. And now we are profound witnesses. It's like St. Francis of Assisi once said, you know, preach the gospel always for all of us. And if necessary, use words. Preach the gospel always. If necessary, use words. So may God continue to bless us and the goodness that we strive to be not only faithful disciples, but faithful witnesses in whatever vocation of life we happen to be in. So let us profess the great faith of the church. I believe, believe in, in one God, God the, Father the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of, of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe, I believe in, in one holy, Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Buoyed by the example of those who have gone before us, let us now present our needs to our God. For Pope Francis, Bishop Morlino, and the pastors of all faith communities, may they reflect the truth of the gospel through their devotion to living according to God's commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations trapped in a cycle of violence may experience peace and reconciliation among their people. And may those in authority make decisions that reflect a deep respect for all of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this Vocations Awareness Week, may God's grace be with those who are contemplating a vocation to the ordained priesthood consecrated religious life, or professional lay ministry for the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all teachers and catechists may be tireless in their efforts to spread the gospel message to those whom they instruct, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are challenged by a disability, aging, or illness may know the compassionate love of our God's grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Pete and Mark Maley, our Mass intentions this morning, may they rest in the loving embrace of our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God receive our personal intentions that we now offer from the quiet of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, we humbly offer to you our lives and these, our special needs and petitions. We ask you to grant them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might live and love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been re restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning had been lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim Claim your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your resurrection until, until you come, come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share Jesus' word of peace with those near. Peace be with you, Tad. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you, Peyton. Thank you. Peace be with you, Henry. <coughs> Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy that you, you should, should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my, and my soul shall be healed. healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that, renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We were led in worship this morning by Monsignor Larry Bakke, the pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe and director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities. I am Todd Slushy. My son Henry and Peyton Saudi were our acolytes today. As members of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe, we are honored to be part of this special ministry for the Apostolate in the Diocese of Madison. Ray Tanko of St. Thomas Aquinas Parish in Madison provided our music ministry. The interpretation by Mary Fruits of St. Dennis Parish, Madison, and closed captioning that is provided by the Apostolate, the deaf of our faith community are able to worship with us. As always, we are grateful for the generosity and concern of the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV for persons with disabilities of all faiths, enabling us to bring this special ministry program to you every Sunday morning. We have two announcements for you. Registrations for the annual Advent Christmas party on December 2nd in Monroe at the Monroe High School are needed by November 16th. Information on the day's events and registration information were in the October 2017 Apostolate Newsletter and the Catholic Herald newspaper. You can also obtain the information and make a registration by calling the number now appearing on your television screen. And as a reminder, today begins the new airing times of the weekly television mass on WISC-TV Channel 3 and Charter 9 at 6 a.m. and at 7 a.m. on TVW 3.2, Charter Channel 14, and on Direct TV Channel 14. May you have a beautiful week and find peace and hope in the Lord.